Hello. Hello. And welcome to June 12th, 1983. The at the final end of all things. Two episodes and the final part of this experience. So Seneca has finally become completely insane, become a whole new person. Mm-hmm. And we're going to see what kind of chaos she can cause in her first couple of loops. Yeah, as I said previously, I'm looking forward to her getting her, her lambda voice, right? The same way that Riki gets a burn voice. I'm wondering if Sadako is going to get uh, a similar voice change. That's terrifying. That'd be great. I don't, ex- as again, like, I don't expect it because I think her voice as it is, is kind of fine for lambda, but I kind of love that. Yeah. Oh my God. I love that we're using this scene to show Sadako's mm-hmm. loop status. This is awful. Just like how Rika affected him. It's also it's also so perfect because uh, like this was the moment that Keiichi finally convinced Rika what needed to be done. Yeah, yeah. This is when she got her hurt back. And Sadako is gonna get the same mm. thing and just go straight through it. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Yeah, and this is also the game, like the series of games where they like made fun of Keiji for not taking them seriously. Mm-hmm. Um. And Seneca won last time. Like, she doesn't need to do this. You know? Yeah. She doesn't need to win in this way. Also, she just killed herself, like, five times, which is amazing. <laughs> it is uh, kind of very veiled there, but... Yeah. She just, like, stabbed herself in the neck five times off screen. 52 times off screen, it would seem. I am so excited for this, but I have no idea what to expect. I don't know what's going to happen. It better be like, big. I was, is- I was, as I mentioned earlier, fully expecting her to, like, you know, go through a thing of trying to save, like, Satoshi and whatnot. But she's just gone in and being like, all right, I know about you now. Later. No, she's just ignored him. That That is honestly, to me, the biggest thing that I feel has been admitted. Like, we have yeah. no idea what happens to Satoshi. Does he just hang no, out? Not only that, get, like, like, the only time we get to see that she found out about Satoshi was like her just that, going in and saying moment. goodbye. Like there is so yeah. much symbolism to that scene, but so like, it's so absent of like the emotional weight that that would have had. Well, that's the thing. Their relationship is so important to her character arc. Good thing you don't have any of those. <laughs> <laughs> that seems implying a lot. Oh, she's so gonna go fucking poke holes in Tepe and change how things are going. Yep, here we are straight away. This absolute lunatic. Yep, he's starting to remember. Oh my god. Oh my god. Finally, Tepe is a main character. This is wild. This is the kind of shit that makes me confident that Sotsu is actually going to be able to fill its airtime. Because, like, there's no way I would have thought we were going to spend, like, at least half an episode. Yeah, this is the sort of thing I was was curious about. Like, how can we expand the scope? And it is by fleshing out this side character in a really weird specific way so then he goes back to like take care of sadako because he's got this newfound sense of responsibility oh, there it is again yeah there's the boy oh he's an ordinary person who buys treats uh, is he just gonna this, give them to all these makes... kids oh this is oh ridiculous God. this is ridiculously wholesome and i just i In hate the same anime they him. made as akasaka and You're crazy yeah. Fucking. And Oishi. Yeah. Oishi go insane and made Tepe a good person. And Tepe's, is, Tepe's turning his life around. I love that we're, we're so really weird. tackling, like, the power of, of like, choice and, like, yeah. it's never too late to change, <laughs> Sadako. It's exactly, never too late right? to change your ways. <laughs> so <laughs> like, much irony. Is he going to fix it up? Is he going to spend a weekend just being a homebody? Oh, my God. Oh, he totally is. Oh, no. This is amazing. This is my favorite part of the show. Just I also Tepe I also like with the idea time. of dualities, right? Like you know that we yeah. trade you know one villain for another. We have everyone mm-hmm. paired off. That like Tepe becoming the good guy is going to be yeah, the tipping no. point for Sadako being well, the bad guy. That's the. I mean, people have always said. Well, I've always said. I will own up to this. You that, are like, people. You know, I am a people. But like in the original story, everyone gets a good like turnaround arc, except for fucking Tepe, uh, Tepe and Rina, technically. But yeah. like. She's less, even less of a character. So for Tepe, the one character who I've been like, why doesn't he get to be a good person? Finally getting to be a good person, but in the worst way possible. It's very much the monkey's paw. The fandom monkey's paw. That's what this is. That's what Tepe being good is. Oh, he's picking she has the, bag the power. Up. 
This she is, has the power. This, it's to so create simple. The ultimate, this the ultimate timeline. Ugh. He's so awkward about it. That's why when Shia shows up, he's still all nervous and stuff. Yeah. Ugh. I love that. And also, like, this kind of implies that after Tepe has more or less redeemed himself in this timeline, mm -hmm. either Urishi does to... the batting in uh, or, or the Sadako end of does. Tatari yeah. Damashi, or... Mm -hmm. She's injected Tepe after his like redemption and still has him kill everyone. I hate everything about this shot. <laughs> Why? Because like this story is just straight up flip the sides of the table. It's like so. I, I don't care. It's, <laughs> the table is chaos incarnate. It's like Sadako. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to be kind. It's so good. <sighs> this scene just... is so. Off putting knowing that it's like Sadako has fucking put him through this. I know. <laughs> it's like such a heartwarming scene on the surface, but like, holy fuck, the implications. Yeah. Oh, uh, for you, Kashi, you really are just the worst. Oh, if he reaches out his hand, oh my god. If he does a visual metaphor, I will die. I know, he's totally going to. I No, he can't. Oh, he can't. It's too and we're going to cut on it. We're going to cut on it and go straight to the next episode. He's just about to put his hand out and then he'll cut. There it is. There oh, it is. Oh, no. Oh. He's doing a metaphor. But will she uh, return it? That's like the spice on well, the scene. Here we go. Either way, it's tragic, but like... Exactly. This is such a- Oh, we cut on it! We fucking cut on it! And also, like, establishing that she already understands what it's like to go mm. through trauma, and yet she's yeah. still gonna fucking do it to her friend. She's gonna force her to make it, It yeah. is horrible. She has become the Tepe that she always feared! Yep. Ah. Yeah, it's cool. Look, I'm totally down for this. I understand completely what's going on now, and I'm thoroughly entertained by the shenanigans- and the like, like how intelligent the story is in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, it's good. And I think that pulling Tepe in to be like, this is the, the test run. You know, she goes directly for the, the biggest extreme. Uh, I think that's great. It's a really high like stake to establish, you know? Yeah, like, I don't know. this is really... This feels like we're about to end on what could be a pretty self-contained story, so it'll be exciting Let's, to see, like, yeah. what the hang is going to be. I'm curious if we're gonna, like, get explanations. Like, I don't feel like I, I need an explanation, but I wonder if we're gonna get, like, and this is what happened in all the arcs so far, but I feel like there's just not enough time. Mm. You know? Unless they just speed through it. Yeah, I, I hope they don't give us answers, because, like, I feel we've already gotten everything we need. I'm okay. Yeah, I'd be down for that. There's one Ryukushi just shows up in the fragment space, like anime Ryukushi. It's like, so I know you've been enjoying watching Higurashi no Nakakoroni Go, announcing the readaptation of Umineko. It's all my doing. You should definitely listen to me, kid. God damn it, Iwa. That is your real name. If that is your real name, <laughs> I will use my reformed uncle pause Terrible. for effect. Terrible. So she, she is she just gonna get to be really good friends with Takano until Takano remembers stuff? Like, is that- Yeah, maybe. Maintain an, an actual relationship with her. Which would be truly awful. Because she's looking for someone to raise the hand out, and if it's not Tomataki, then who else is closer but Sadako? Who else is closer? Oh. This is the craziest shit I've ever experienced. That's how this is going, dude. Where's the Aqua Okonogi gets the syndrome? Oh, oh yeah, we haven't had that, have so we? So many possibilities. We haven't had that, no. We haven't even seen Nomura. You know what you could do? What? <laughs> you could begin watching this season with uh, Satoka Washihen, and then when it gets to the moment where Satoko views the fragments, read the visual novel as a flashback episode. Oh, that's and great. And then <laughs> come back, watch the rest of the arc, and then watch the first four. <laughs> I back that plan. <laughs> I'm on board. A chronological. Someone, find, watch. someone watching, find one of your friends and get them to do that. <laughs> How awful would that be? <laughs> like normally, when we get these cuts to, to Matsuri Bayashi, we get like 
three lines just to establish a key thing. But we're getting the full scene here. Not to mention, a like, huge a few of the scenes that we've had redone have been scenes that were kind of, like, a little goofed in the Dean anime. But this one was, like, yeah. really good in the Dean anime. This one was good. Yeah. Like, there has to be a reason why we're getting all of this recap. But I, yeah. I don't know what it is. Oh, my God. Could you imagine if this story ends with a fucking, like, political thriller about oh. Burn being Nomura and Lambda yeah. being Takano? Something crazy like that, yeah. I feel like if that was going to be the case, though, we would have seen more of Nomura this season. Oh my god, that was all okay, for cool. that. The yes. absolute monster. Even better. Look who's shown up after there she all is. this time. You fucker. I hope I'm not right, but that mm. would be pretty fucking crazy for next season if that's Maybe. like the journey. So we find Nomura out that like, like, Takano and Nomura was one of the games. So I guess throw out everything I was saying. I guess Sadako doesn't have to like establish a relationship. She can just do it, which is very. Awful. I mean, I do kind of uh, like the ambiguity we're getting of how she's managing to make these things happen. Sure, sure, yeah. Because it does I, like, I like it does push us more towards the, like you know meta physical magical yeah, side yeah. of the story. Oh my god! I can't. What I can't is this. happening? Ah! This structure has like, become all the a way mess, back. and I love it. Also, Hifumi has, like, the most different character design of anyone this yeah, season. he looks much thinner and a little bit older, maybe. Like, even in, in Onukakashi, we saw that the, the clinic was being remodeled, so... Oh, in, in You know what I mean. Whatever. Damashi. Only Damashi. Like, so I imagine this happens every loop, and that's how Sadako gets her hands on the, the accelerant. Yeah, that and, like, you know, we're already cagey about what happens in Onodamashi, but then in Wadadamashi, like, you know, they just bugger off. Like, Sadako's plan was clearly well and truly in effect by then. Because that's kind of the interesting idea, I guess, is that this is now just part of the setup. Like, this happens every loop. Um, and it's a huge change, right? Yeah. But I, I do like that we're, you know, in the very final episode of this season of the show, we're getting, like, the big setup twist, um, this is why the Hinamizawa disaster doesn't happen. Um, and, and this is what's like preventing Sadako from being just a footnote. Or oh, can Takano resist a good yarn? I know. Let's she see. won't be able to at <laughs> all. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Gross. Is it broccoli or Oh my god. If, if it does end up that fucking. Uh, mm. Lambda ends up becoming Takano. That line about it's me you don't like will hit so different. So don't fight God. Whatever you do, do not pick a fight with God under a tree in a lightning storm. Just a bad idea. <laughs> Dude, what if they put their hands together and they do a. They like form together. They like become one person. Wouldn't that be great? That's too early. It's too early. <laughs> we got to save that for later. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. I really hope Wouldn't I'm that wrong. be a great <laughs> moment, though? Oh, it would. Uh, what a crazy end to the season that would be. If that would be now insane. Now we are the same person. It's really uh -huh. interesting because I feel like a lot of this stuff, you know, by this time into the anime, we'd kind of clued into what was going on, but it's still like so much more painful having seen the implications. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> Landscaping, they got this. Come on, guys. Oh, uh, there he is. Uh, it's the boy. The question is, do we do we spend the next season working towards what Sadako thinks her goal is? Yeah, well... Or working I mean, towards that's a, what it actually is. Yeah, I mean that's that's the classic. I mean, I, I it's it, that's the basis of all storytelling when a character thinks they want something but they need something else, exactly, and then that's right. the end of their character arc. Like, that's I'm making very, very non-committal statements, thing. but it's still clearly like what we're going for. Just <laughs> feather and just straight up yeah. being like, "You're an idiot." I love it. Mm. Oh, the password was fucking. It was the spinal cord, was it? No, it was uh, something else. I think it was Hifumi and Takano, but it written oh out as yeah, you're totally right. Quite frankly, this is a very Subdued. like non-committal place to leave this. Yeah, like if they I had agree. just not announced the following season, it would have made like no difference. It's fine. Well, that's the thing. Like we didn't end this season with a bang. Yeah, well, unless there's a bang about to happen, but like. Well, like, what she's about to say is clearly going to be, like, you know, the bang, but we already know. 
She's just going to be like, Previous yes, I'll continue this forever. Nothing. Once I decide to win, my victory is certain. There we go. Mm -hmm. There's a tiny knee. There is... That was and, such uh, a bizarre ending. Like, it yeah. just... Kind of showed us like, the things. Yeah, they announced it straight away, they but like... Us the stuff that we've, like, figured out and expecting, like, it's all happened. Yeah. Um, which is cool. But yeah, like, there wasn't a big explosion at the end. There wasn't a... Like, there was a cliffhanger in, like, what are they going to get up to next time? But it wasn't... It's not quite as, as like, powerful as I was expecting, you know? Yeah. I kind of like it, though. I kind of am excited to see... Oh, I am we have very to get excited to, to see. I was we, just... Like, Ryukashi is notorious for ending on, like, a big punch. Yeah, and, well, that's the thing. Like, and and we I will have say, to... You go, you go. I, I will say, like, Higurashi typically ends on a big punch and then, like, cools off and gives you space to breathe about it afterwards. Yeah, for sure. But And I feel like that was kind of what they were going for there, but, like, the breath was too long. Mm, like, yeah. we... Like, look, the thing is, ahead. I was expecting to see Rika at some point... Because we know at the end of the fourth arc that mm. she's figured Sadako out. Yeah. Like, we know that she knows what Sadako is up to. So why are we ending on Sadako being like, I am totally going to trick her when we already know that Rika knows that that's what's going on? What yeah. a weird place to end it. <laughs> like, in terms of the narrative. I, I, it's I'm very left bizarre. having a very clear expectation. Like, we have to cut back to Rika. That's what has to happen next. Mm. I'm not left wondering, like, what is the next step? Um, yeah, you know, besides kind of do a flashback of some sort, because that's something we like to do in the show. But like, I, I have a very clear idea of what's about to happen, you know? Yeah, I think that's one of the hardest things to say about, like, where the story goes, is that one of the kind of key things that Ryukashi always does for me as a storyteller is mm. I start off, I have expectations, I go, oh, it's no way there's this, and then go the whole way through the story and realize I was right all along. But yeah, we're kind of going in... Was. And I almost feel like my expectation for Satsu is that, like, we've already resolved everything. Like, Yeah, I, I feel like I know what's going to happen, mm. in a sense. Like, in broad strokes, in terms of, you know, this, we're going to open on Rika waking up in the next timeline. That may not be the case. I may eat these words next week. Yeah. And I, you know, I probably will tomorrow. in some form or another. You know, tomorrow. You know what I mean? The next time this episode comes out, Felix. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. Yeah. I just wanted to restate yeah, for the, the audience the, the timing sense. with which we're recording this. Like... I would not be surprised if we don't immediately open up on Rike doing the uh -huh, as she wakes up in her mattress. But that is what I expect. I expect to get that sequence and to see Rika's perspective mm. on like, oh, I've figured out what Sadako is doing. And Sadako's also figured out what she's doing. Like the playing field is is level in a, yeah. in a sense, right? Like, even though we have these added stakes that it's Sadako who is Rika's best friend, we're still in a very similar situation to what we had during the original story where Takano was in, was using her certain will to, to influence events and to impose a fate. Yeah, right? like She sure. wasn't a looper, but it was the same sort of principle there with these two characters with their fates pressed up against each other mm. who will win, you know? The other in, thing in that's that sense, really fascinating about yeah. the setup for this arc, right, is that realistically, no matter where the loop starts... It's mm. pretty much going to be with the two of them at home together. So the most sure. natural well, reaction that's... is just a discussion between the two of them. So how yeah. do you create any stakes out of Tension that? Like, does and, someone yeah. just have to run off in the middle of the night and is well, it going to be like a is... race for someone else to get away? Yeah. Well, this is something I've been I've been thinking about because we saw in one of the loops, Rika just woke up and she was already cut in half. Yeah. Like, if Sadako can just cut her in half, then... You know, that seems like the logical place to start next season. Like, uh oh, mm. Sedeko's cut you in half again because she wakes up before you for some reason. Like, that seems to be something she can do. Yeah. So why not start it there? You know, that that's what like would logically come to pass. Mm. Um I don't know, like I'm still looking I'm I guess the 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 final thought that I well not the final thought, but like the big thought in my mind is just how is Ryukashi and how is the studio Bishone going to surprise me and subvert my expectations because yeah, as you say totally. um we've reached the point where like my feelings of how it's like even at the start i i said like it's probably going to be about like rika's selfishness like mm -hmm. that's probably the the theme we're going to pull on um not entirely correct on the form that would take but like i felt like that was an obvious starting point yeah for this for this conflict and we've more or less followed that you know mm. in a sense um and we've portrayed sedeko's pain and we've portrayed her like 
figuring out how looping works and how detached she is, like even compared to Rika. And we've set up the stakes such that is an even playing field of these two these two minds. Yeah. Um, and we've almost like pushed the other characters aside, like the club members and the whole village. Like if Sadako is gonna keep just setting up Takano to call off the the disaster, then then the stake of the whole village is not part of the equation anymore. Yeah. At least not in the in the direct obvious sense of like, well, we gotta stop the village from getting gassed, you know? Yeah, I wonder if we're gonna start like, seeing like a bunch of the loops, you know, you know landing Cascading outside each like, other in or the something. years after. Maybe. You know, maybe. are we actually going to see less of like now that they both know each other are looping, like there's not really much mm. point to maintaining the game. You know, yeah. kind of what's implied by Feather at the end there saying, Oh, I didn't know my power could achieve this, is that like that's that's just gonna be the setup mm. now. Well, yeah, my my thought is that if they do engage themselves on the on the game level, they're both trying to like manipulate the loops and manipulate their friends into having yeah. these flashbacks and and syndroming people, then those memories of being syndrome and of, of being manipulated by Sadako and Rika have to cascade, right? Yeah, so maybe we sure. reach a point, maybe maybe this is the midpoint of the season or maybe this is the finale where just everybody else in the village is completely like their minds are just as broken as what Sadako is trying to do to Rika. Yeah, we actually get into Maybe like that's... the rest of the cast trying yeah. to break out of the cycle that yeah. the they... other two have put them into. I don't know. Like whether that ends with the other characters also like gaining as much power as Sadako and Rika, or if it's just gonna be like, well, we've broken this world completely, all of our best friends are completely gone and we can't possibly fix them because we've just like you've rewound the VHS too many times on these other characters. Yeah. And they just they just don't operate like normal people anymore, mm. and that's where we like both the characters realize, oh, we've been played. You know, maybe that's where we're driving towards. Yeah, I don't I, know. I think the other thing that'll be interesting there is because like one of the clear things set up with the two of them bullying each other. Yeah. Uh, you know, in uh, Saint Lucia, the whole setup was that Sadako kind of like dug herself her own hole. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because Rika kind of. Not like she kind of put forward the bare minimum, right? Like even yeah, having sure. when Sadako turned her down, she accepted it, even though it was clear from her reaction her she or, knew that that right, wasn't the sense. truth, right? Let's well, think it's it's a classic Rukushi, you know, communication conundrum where mm. both sides are at fault for one reason or another, but it escalates wildly out of control. That's just yeah. So the question, the question right. I kind of have there is: Does that resolve with like? the storyline that oh yes the the rest of the club has to come in and we all have to be friends again yes or does it resolve yes. with the club teaching the lesson to the other two in a way where they can walk away from it yeah, and then how do we still leave that off with like you know the spirit of the the two of them you know left to the void because well, that's that's yeah um, the implication of feather and being there is that they didn't learn their lesson either that well, or as we thing, say right? like maybe we actually go sotsu set up them learning the lesson then we set up umaneko as a battleground and mm -hmm. come back with another higurashi season well, after that honestly like on a personal level my my biggest question is like we can clearly see and the writing is clearly on the wall that these characters are discarding the lessons that they should have learned yeah in order to continue the the battle right mm -hmm. So my biggest question is, will we get the actual downer ending? Will we just lead directly into Umineko with like, yep, and then nobody learned anything at all and it's a horrible tragedy totally. and our witches occur? Like, is that, like, I get that that's, that's my expectation, you know? That's what I, you know, if I have to pick one or the other, that's what I think is going to happen. Is mm. there a chance that we get a good ending out of this, you know? Is there a chance for some sliver of hope? I, I or, feel like we have some to version. in the long run, but we don't well, know how the run is, like how long the run is. Because Higurashi and Umineko are very different properties. Umineko only, only exists as a reflection on the work of Higurashi. And so for us to tread that ground of this being a reflection of Higurashi and a criticism, like mm. it almost feels like we've done this before in a sense. Yeah. Um. So I, I would, at the moment, I expect a downer ending but I would love for Ryuji to spin this around and make this a hopeful one instead. I don't know what kind of horse shit he can pull to make that happen. God, could you imagine though? Like, I would love that. Could you imagine if Ryukishi next season just straights up 
like this season was all Umineko analogies and next season is just Kikonia. That'd be pretty great. That'd, That'd be, be pretty great. wild. I will say, um, like Ryukshi has written in Umineko two episodes, two of the eight episodes in particular, that are designed around the idea of breaking down a murder mystery structure and the characters dwell within mm. it. And then the ne- the very next episode rebuilds murder mystery as something hopeful and wonderful and fantastical. Yeah. So if that's that that may also be the relationship that we take between Go and Sotsu. Totally. Um, that we you know begin at the lowest point. S- Sadako has dragged us down, and then by the end, you know they turn on Yua, Featheren, or whatever that hell we're calling her, mm-hmm. um, and we pull ourselves out. But anyway, that's just me being hopeful, right? You guys gotta just gotta recognize if we All get to right. the end of Satsu's tragedy. Well, I'm, I'm done. When you're watching this, should pretty much be halfway through Satsu's season, so we'll see how our predictions have gone up until this oh, point. Goodness. We will, uh, I guess, be following <laughs> Satsu as it launches, and for yeah. you, the first episode of our Satsu run through will be uh, next week. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Look forward to it. I hope they don't do a mid-season finale. I have not scheduled that in, and it's I'm quite happen. scared it's going to happen. Here it comes. Here comes. It's going to be an odd number of episodes for every oh, arc, and no. it's going to be a mid-season finale. Oh, uh, why would they do this? there's going to be trailers this? on the internet that spoil uh, the finale. That's right. I can avoid trailers the, on the internet. Um, I just don't go anywhere. They're going to bring back the talk show thing at the end of each episode where Rika and Hanyu- No, Sadako and, and Yua chat about Tepe and how oh, that'd silly be he wild. is. be very silly. I'm down. All right. Next right, time. Let's do it. Next time.